Page 12 of Properties of Curves. Uh, so on this page, we're going to take a look at uh, these four functions, and we're going to find their stationary points. We're going to classify the stationary points. We're going to find the inflection points. Um, we're going to uh, classify the inflection points. We're going to find increasing and decreasing intervals, find where they're concave up and down. And then finally, we're going to sketch the function using all the features. Okay. So remember that in order to find these, we need to take first and second derivatives. So first, we're going to find stationary points. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the first derivative of uh, this function. It would be 2x, right? The second derivative of this function, which we need for finding inflection points, is 2. OK, so uh, the stationary points we can find by setting the first derivative equal to 0. So obviously, the stationary point is going to be at 0, x equals 0. So if we were going to draw a sine diagram for this function, uh, the stationary point is 0. And the, um, if we go to the right of, of 0, we're going to end up with a positive value. And if we go to the left of 0, we're going to end up with a negative value. Okay, so that uh, gives me the increasing and decreasing intervals. So the increasing interval would be uh, x is greater than 0. Let me write it in green. x is greater than 0 is the increasing interval. The decreasing interval would be x is less than 0. Um, so the inflection point occurs. Uh, well, actually, there's no inflection point because the second derivative is always positive 2. So if you look at the um, stationary, uh, not the, the sine diagram for the second derivative, what you're going to see is always positive, which means it's always positive 2, right? Which means it's always concave up. So concavity, always concave up. Okay. And if we were to draw this function not knowing that it was a parabola, we would, uh, let's see, we'd draw, um, the axes and our function would basically be, uh, shaped like this, right? It's going down left of zero at zero. There's a stationary point and it's going up to the right of zero. Okay. Concave up. All right. That's it. So that was A. Let's take a look at the function in B. It's square root of x, also known as x to the 1 half. The first derivative of x to the 1 half would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half, also known as 1 over 2 square root of x. Um, is there a, a stationary point here? If we set this equal to 0, we can see that it is never uh, going to be 0 because the numerator is 1. So um, what about the sine diagram? If we put a positive value of x in here, it's going to be positive. We can never put 0 in here because, um, uh, oh, actually we can put 0. We can put 0 in here and it would just be equal to 0. Uh, the function would be equal to 0. But if we put 0 into the, the derivative function, then it would be um, infinite, right? Um, and of course, a negative value cannot be put in here. So basically, uh, the, um, at 0, the derivative is infinity. Uh, the, the, yeah, the slope is infinite. And um, otherwise, it's positive. What about the second derivative? So the second derivative would be uh, 1 half times negative 1 half times x to the negative 3 halves. I can simplify this as negative 1 over 4 uh, x to the 3 halves in the denominator. So this, again, is similar in that um, at 0, um, 
this would be uh, infinite. And then to the right of zero, we would have a negative value. So that means it's concave down. And of course, anything to the left of zero is uh, illegal also. So uh, the function basically is growing or increasing for the interval where it's allowed, which is x is greater than 0. So it's increasing. It is concave down for the interval that it exists for x is greater than or equal to 0. OK, so let's draw that. We have a function which is increasing starting at zero and is concave down like that. Okay, so that was C. Let's take a look at E. So E is a polynomial, and uh, when we take the first derivative, it's equal to 12x cubed plus 12x squared. Um, we're going to set it equal to zero to find the stationary points. And in order to find the values of x which make this zero, it's easier if we factor out x squared, actually 12x squared, and we're left with x plus 1 in the parentheses. So we know that there's uh, a stationary point at negative 1 and zero. So if we drew our uh, sine diagram, we would have a stationary point at 0 and negative 1. Um, if we put in a big positive number, we would have a positive number out. If we put a positive, big positive number in for x. If we put a big number, negative number in for x, we would have a negative value out. Um, yeah. And if we put a number between 0 and negative 1, like negative 1 half, then this would yield a positive number, and this would yield a positive number, so it's positive. OK. Um, all right, and that's, so that's the first derivative of sine diagram. So we can see that the, there's a, it decreases uh, below um, negative 1, and it increases between negative 1 and 0, and it increases between or increases above zero and then there's stationary points at negative one and zero um, what about the concavity so the concavity we need to find the second derivative which is going to be 36 x squared plus 24 x when we try to find the inflection points um, we could factor out 12x and then we'd have 3x plus 2 equals 0. So our um, inflection points occur at 0 and at uh, negative 2 thirds. So on our sine diagram we would have 0 and negative 2 thirds and those would be the inflection points and if we put in a big positive number the second derivative would be 0 if we put in a big negative number, the second derivative, I'm sorry, this, the, if we put in a big positive number, the second derivative would be positive. If we put in a big negative number, the second derivative would also be positive. If we put in a number between negative two thirds and zero, uh, then uh, we would have a negative number uh, times um, a positive number. So that would give us a negative in the middle. OK. All right. And so as far as concavity goes then, so for, for x is less than negative 2 thirds, it would be concave up. And for x between negative 2 thirds and 0, it would be concave down. And from 0 up, it would be concave up. OK, so let's try to graph that. So here we have 
Um, let's see the points. The critical points, negative one and zero and let's see, negative two thirds. Okay, so we basically have a function which is um, decreasing until we get to negative one. And then at negative one, it's momentarily uh, stationary. And then it, we increase from negative one to zero. And then we decrease, um, or we, we, we uh, momentarily are stationary again. And then we increase again at x is greater than zero. So let's check our concavity. So the concavity below negative two thirds is concave up. Yeah, I drew that correctly. Concave up until we get to negative two thirds. And then it's concave down until x equals zero. And then it's concave up again. So I, I drew that the way it should be. Okay. And last one, we have another polynomial here. In order to find the uh, stationary points, we're going to find the first derivative. The first derivative is 4x cubed minus 8x. Okay, and then we're going to set that equal to 0 to find the stationary points. Let's factor out a 4x. So we're left with 2x squared minus 2. No, I'm sorry, that would be <laughs> x squared minus 2 equals 0. So our stationary points are going to be at 0 and positive square root of 2 and negative square root of 2. Um, I know that because if I factored this x squared minus 2, I would get x minus square root of 2, x plus square root of 2. All right? So I have stationary points at these three points. A big positive number would give me a positive output for the first derivative. Big negative number would give me a negative number. And then um, it would, um, let's see, between negative square root of 2 and 0. I would have a positive and then a negative. So to find my inflection points, I need to take this, to find the second derivative, which would be 12x squared minus 8. Set that equal to 0 to find the inflection points. I'll factor out a 4. And I would end up with 3x squared minus 2 equals 0. If I factored that, it would be, um, let's see, Hmm, I think it'd be better if I factored out a 12. And then I end up with 12x squared minus 2 thirds equals 0. Now, in order to find uh, when that would uh, equal 0, I would need to factor this into square root of 2 thirds x plus square root of two-thirds. So my, my, my two uh, zeros on the uh, second derivative uh, sign diagram are going to be negative square root of two-thirds and positive square root of two-thirds. And if I put in a big negative number, I would get a positive. If I put a big positive number, it would be positive, and in between it would be zero. So that is my concavity. So my concavity is um, concave up uh, for x is less than negative square root of two-thirds. It's also concave up for x is greater than positive square root of two-thirds, and it's concave down for x is, I'm sorry, x is between negative square root of two-thirds and positive square root of two-thirds. And um, the increasing and decreasing intervals, the 
decreasing intervals occur here and here. So that would be when x is less than negative square root of 2, and when x is between 0 and square root of 2. And it decreases or increases when x is between negative square root of 2 and 0, and when x is greater than square root of 2. Okay, so let's try to draw this graph, sketch this graph. So let's see it. Um, uh, let's let's graph our x-axis. So we got um, we got negative square root of two here. We got positive square root of two here. We have square root of two thirds, negative square root of two thirds here. We have positive square root of two thirds here. Something like that. Um, the increasing and decreasing we have increasing um or we have decreasing up to here decreasing and then it momentarily becomes uh stationary and then it starts going up until zero momentarily stationary and then it goes down uh until square root of two momentarily stationary again, and then it goes up again. So it looks kind of like that. Let's check the concavity if it matches. So concave up from negative, x is less than negative square root of 2 over 3. Yeah, so here we have concave up. That looks good. We have concave up when x is greater than square root of 2 thirds. Yeah, that looks good. And then it's concave down in between. True. Okay, so that's a pretty good sketch. Looks kind of like a part of a sign or something like that, doesn't it? Okay, so that's G. All right. And that's it. We're done with page 12.